Hi biologists, let's start by looking at the learning objectives for this lesson. At the end of this section and following the biology syllabus, you should be able to Describe bacterial reproduction. What does this mean? What are we trying to understand? Well, this is extremely easy. All you have to be able to do is to describe how bacteria reproduce. Let's look at bacterial reproduction. Bacteria reproduce asexually. This means that there is only one parent involved. There are no female or male bacteria cells. They reproduce by binary fission, which is a form of mitosis, or putting it very simply, they make a copy of themselves or split in half. Binary fission occurs every 20 minutes in optimum conditions. That is, when temperature is suitable and perhaps there's a plentiful supply of oxygen and moisture. Then the bacterial cells will reproduce or make copies of themselves. The resulting daughter cells are identical to each other. They are actually clones and are genetically the same. This corresponds to the idea or concept behind mitosis, where mitosis is nuclear division producing two new daughter cells, each genetically identical to each other and to the original parent cell. The phrase daughter cells is just a scientific term meaning new cells that are produced. Looking at binary fission in more detail, we can see that it's made up of four stages. The first stage of the life cycle would involve growth. This is followed by DNA replication or copying of the chromosomal DNA, followed by cell elongation and lastly finishing with cell division. Let's have a quick look at how this happens. Well, first of all, remember that bacterial cells have a cell wall and are filled with cytoplasm. They also have a chromosomal DNA. Remember, bacterial cells are prokaryotic, so this chromosomal DNA is found free in the cytoplasm. Before binary fission can take place, the bacteria cell must have reached a certain size. Having reached that size, the chromosomal DNA will replicate or make an exact copy of itself. The cell will then elongate, moving the replicated DNAs apart from each other. As you can see here, the cell is after increasing in length. The cell membrane and cell wall will then pinch in or ingrowths will occur, forming ultimately two identical daughter cells. These two cells have identical DNA which has just replicated, which means they are genetically identical to each other and to the cell that was there originally. So looking at this in a stepwise process, we can see that the first, in the first step, the bacteria cell grows to a certain size, corresponding to the phase of growth. Then DNA replication takes place. The chromosomal DNA makes an exact copy of itself. This is followed by cell elongation, pulling the replicated, or I should say pushing the replicated DNA strands apart. Ingrowths of the cell membranes and the cell walls then occur. This is referred to as the cell division phase and ultimately two new identical daughter cells or two new identical cells are formed. 
this process of producing the cells would remind you of the process of cytokinesis in mitosis that we've already covered in another video. Again, as a reminder, the two new cells are identical to each other and are actually clones. Now, mutations in bacteria can take place. However, as we've just said, new bacteria cells are genetically identical in general, having been produced by the process of mitosis or binary fission, really. So there's very little genetic variation between individuals. And as a result of this, bacteria should be slow to evolve or to change. Remember, variation is the basis of evolution. And when there is variation amongst a population, then the different organisms might be better adapted to the environment and thus will be able to evolve. In the case of bacteria, there's little genetic variation, so the bacteria should be slow to evolve. However, while this might be the case, due to the fact that they have such a short life cycle, Remember, binary fission can occur every 20 minutes in optimum conditions. This means that if any mutation occurs or if there's any change in the structure of the DNA or if there's any variation, well, this variation or change or mutation can be quickly passed on to a large number of bacteria. Because remember, after 20 minutes, there will be two bacteria produced 20 minutes after that, there will be four bacterial cells. 20 minutes after that, there'll be eight bacterial cells with that mutation. 20 minutes after that, there'll be 16 bacterial cells with that mutation. And you can imagine how many you will have after a number of hours. So let's suppose a bacterial cell mutates and during the process of DNA replication, somehow or other, that bacteria is able to resist antibiotics. Then the short life cycle and the rapid passing of mutations onto multiple generations in a very quick space of time, every 20 minutes, well, this will allow the bacteria to adapt to this new antibiotic, to these new conditions and be able to survive the antibiotic and they will evolve resistance very quickly. Such bacteria that evolve very quickly and are able to resist antibiotics are called superbugs. Such bacteria are the MRSA bacteria, for example, that can resist many different types of antibiotics. And as a result, it is very difficult to eliminate it or wipe it out. It is basically a superbug. And there you have it. Practice in a jotter. Double your efforts. Now that we have reached the end of our lesson, have we achieved our objective? Can you describe bacterial reproduction?